Hello everyone, welcome back to part three of our series on seed starting. And so today's video is about the least fun part of seed starting, and that is thinning your seedlings. So here you can see in this sun gold tray, I had mentioned when we start seeds, our goal is to have one plant per cell. And so we're way above that goal here. So the first thing I look for is, is there a group together? I just sort of pull those out. Um, that avoids dislodging the roots of the plant you want to keep. So when you're looking at thinning your seedlings, see yeah, like there's three, I'm going to pull that spindly one. I look for spindly ones, groups, obviously sick ones. If there aren't, then you just sort of pull <laughs> and you do it quickly because the more you think about it, yeah, you don't want to pull any of them because, you know, they're your plants and you put all that time and effort into them. But if you don't thin them, what they're going to do is end up competing with each other for nutrients, water, light, etc. And so if you have more than one per cell, you're really doing them a disservice. They're not going to grow very well. They'll just get really tall, really spindly and thin and kind of get really sickly and weak. And so it's kind of the same principle in terms of growing plants in a container or anywhere. You want to give them some space to breathe and some space to um, get their own nutrients. So what I'm looking for again, like those are in a group, I'll take those out. These are kind of weak looking, I'll take those out and just sort of leave the one. Uh, don't worry if they're a little tall at first, you know, they're not, you know, leggy means they're like six inches tall and they're just like this skinny little thing, you know, those are just, just fine, those will thicken right up. So um, when you're looking at your seedlings, sometimes they look like this and they're all about equal. In that case, I sort of try to keep the one that's in the middle of the cell just so that they're spaced out evenly. So that's another consideration sometimes is the location in the cell where the actual seedling is. You can move them around and try to transplant them. I've done that, but it's sort of a, I don't know if it's really worth the effort in, in retrospect. It's always better, like this one here is small. I'll just take that one out. These two in the left-hand corner are about the same, so I'm just gonna pick the one that's kind of on the edge and take it out and that leaves me with four good plants and so you know even that that's four plants of brandy wine probably i'm only going to end up planting one in the garden maybe two and so that's something to keep in mind as well these are the sart lace i think they're called they have, these are new to us these are the purple and yellow tomato from baker creek so again i'm following the same principle if there's a big group i'm going to take those out unless one is super healthy just sort of take those out um any ones that look really just appear strange or unhealthy. Um, the ones that just haven't opened yet because the seed husk is still stuck to the plant, you can, as I'm going to show you, sort of pluck that. Um, so I'm just going to pluck that off there and let those leaves open. That's not anything wrong with the plant. That's just it hasn't um, shed its seed shell yet. So here's the tray once it's thinned appropriately, one per cell, looks a lot different, a lot cleaner. What's going to happen now is these plants will be able to get a lot larger and more healthy a lot faster. And so that's exactly what you want. There's only so much nutrient um, content in each of those cells. And so now it's all going to go to one plant instead of um, four or five. So thank you for watching. Uh, we hope to see you again in our next video where we'll talk about how to go about caring for these seedlings and get them ready for your garden.